Hey friends, uh, Mark yet again from Demo Missions, demonstrating God's love to you by providing free digital resources to help you demonstrate the love of God to others. So this is the second of uh, my Demo Memos and today I want to share with you some thoughts about growing old, about the ageing process. Uh, next week, I'm going to be nearer 70 than 60, so you can do the maths. But uh, I want to talk about growing old. I've often ho heard older people say that there is really no dignity in growing old. And in order to understand that statement, whether you agree, agree with it or not, I think you've really got to put yourself in the shoes of older people. As a young man, I was in banking and I used to go and visit on behalf of the bank um, elderly people living in nursing homes and uh, ex-servicemen living in special homes. And um, it really opened my eyes to the reality that for a lot of old people, um, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult uh, time. You've got to put yourself in their shoes and imagine that um, they might not have any family members left uh, and they're just incredibly lonely. I found loneliness was a major, major problem. Um, and in addition to that, many are infirm. And whilst the uh, spirit is willing, the body just will not perform the way that they would like it to. And therefore they can't get around and can't do the things they would like to do. And so often are just uh, stuck, marooned in a place with nobody to speak to. So in that sense, you know, there really is no dignity in growing old. But I just want to share with you today that I, I do believe that it doesn't have to be that way. Let's, let's just have a look what the Bible says, and I'm referring uh, to some notes here as well. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 16, it says this, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our eyes and our gaze on things that cannot be seen for the things we see now will soon be gone, but the things we cannot see will last forever. And that's a, a version of the Bible called the New Living Translation, which I quite like because it's, uh, it's something that people in this day and age can relate to. The sad thing is that most of the dear folk that I would love to share this thought, this demo memo with, uh, will be elderly and will most, most likely never see or hear this because they don't have access to or are able to use technology. However, the reality is that all of us are growing old daily. So it would be wise, I think, at this stage to uh, cultivate a relationship with God because this passage... It's um, the Apostle Paul speaking to the Corinthian church is speaking to Christians. It says that though our bodies are wasting away daily, actually our spirits are being renewed every day and we are kind of um, storing up for ourselves or building up for ourselves a weight of glory that far outweighs all these troubles because we fix our eyes on eternal things, on the things that are unseen, rather than things that we see around us. So here, the Apostle Paul is addressing people who already are Christians, who already have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, who already understand that this body, this earthly shell, has a shelf life. That's the reality. The reality is that we are spirit, spiritual beings. 
you know, when, when you use a verse like John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, you could say, well, how is that possible? Because we all perish. This body will perish. Billy Graham once made a statement. It was, um, I was at Liverpool soccer stadium Anfield in Liverpool in 1986 when Billy Graham came over to the uh, United Kingdom I was part of a group of businessmen that helped facilitate that uh, incredible crusade and I was standing uh, or in the stands of Anfield football soccer stadium in Liverpool and Billy Graham made this statement and it really took me aback I don't know why but it did he said Death is total in every generation. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what does that even mean? What he was basically saying is, every one of us is going to die. So when he says, John 3, 16, that if we believe and receive God's gift, that we shall not perish, but have everlasting life. How is that possible? Well, it's only possible if we understand that the part of us that is eternal is our spirit. We have a spirit, a soul and a body. And it's the spirit part of us that will last forever. And the Bible tells us in the, in the fourth book of John, Jesus' encounter with the woman at the well. He said, God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And in John three, he told Nicodemus, the uh, Jewish leader, that he must be born again. In other words, flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. To be born again is a renewal of our spirit. When we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we receive God's Holy Spirit. He is the one that reveals who Jesus is. And by being born again, by receiving the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, trusting him for our eternal salvation, we are born again, we receive a new spirit. So that's why I say that it doesn't have to be that way. What doesn't? Growing old has to be a, a sad, um, hopeless thing. If we cultivate a relationship with God now and a relationship with Jesus Christ, because John 3.16 says that whoever believes in him will not perish, spirit, the body will perish, but will have eternal life. Eternal life is, isn't just living forever. Everybody, if we are a spirit, and we all are, there's a spirit part to all of us, that means we will all live forever. The question is, where will we live? Now, if we receive Jesus as our Lord and Saviour, we will live for eternity in the presence of God. If we are not, then we will not live for eternity in the presence of God. And living outside of the presence of God is what some people call hell. Whatever you call it, it's not the best that God has to offer you. So you've got to make a choice, guys, ladies and gentlemen. It's about choices. God is a gentleman. He does not impose his will on us. He gives us a free will. And I'm reminded in the book of Deuteronomy here in uh, chapter 30 and verse 19, God says this. He says, this day... I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life. It's almost like God has to spell it out, but that's the reality. Growing old doesn't have to be a terrible thing. Though our bodies, as 2 Corinthians 4, 16 says, are wasting away daily because this mortal shell has a shelf life, inwardly our spirits are being renewed and achieving for us a weight of glory that outweighs all of these 
light and momentary troubles that we're experiencing. By cultivating a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with God now, through prayer and through reading his word, even if we're infirm, even if we are lonely, we can have God's presence with us and we can just have our spirits being renewed daily. And then ultimately we go to be with the Lord. We go to spend eternity in his presence. The Bible says to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Guys, we are in a win-win situation. So there can be dignity in growing old because we're getting nearer to our heavenly home and that reward, that weight of glory that God has promised us in his word. God bless you.